Right now, as this video is being recorded, the COVID-19 pandemic is raging. We desperately need to find a drug that would at least make SARS-CoV-2 less virulent, more like the regular flu. SARS-CoV-2 virus did not emerge from nowhere. It evolved from a large family of coronaviruses. Its 18-year-old brother, SARS-CoV from southern China, its much deadlier cousin, MERS-CoV from Saudi Arabia, and countless other benign coronaviruses that caused the common cold or nothing at all. That SARS-CoV-2 belongs to a family of well-studied viruses is fortunate. It gives us hints about the biological targets we should go after in our urgent quest for effective treatment. SARS-CoV-2 genome, unlike ours, is made of RNA with its own unique replication machinery, introducing a ribonucleotide analog that specifically interferes with this replication is thus an obvious strategy. That is what the drug Remdesivir is all about. We also have a good idea about how the virus infects cells. It binds to ACE2, a membrane-bound enzyme that regulates inflammation. It is then engulfed in a membrane-bound vesicle, a process called endocytosis, and at some point it leaves the endosome to replicate. Chlorokine lowers the pH of the endosome and interferes with this endosomal escape. Accelerated clinical trials are underway, and we all hope that both drugs will fulfill their promises. But two drugs? is definitely not enough. We know that effective antiviral therapy, such as in AIDS, usually requires a combination. More and more experts agree that this may also be true for SARS-CoV-2. We need to find more drugs for sure. And there's an empty spot, a biological target that is begging to be hit, the SARS-CoV-2 main protease, which X-ray structure was determined just days ago. It plays a vital role in cleaving the newly synthesized SARS-CoV-2 polyprotein to generate functional building blocks for new viruses. Predicting the 3D structure of a protein enables the most sophisticated way to look for a lead candidate in silico. Such a virtual screening measures molecular docking, the affinities between a binding site and a candidate compound. And if a positive heat compound is otherwise known to exert inhibitory effects on other viruses, if it has been shown in vitro to interfere with viral growth, what is purely virtual becomes real. This is precisely the work that was carried out on SARS-CoV-2 on its MPRO protease through virtual screening and in whole cell infection assays using the SARS-CoV-2 deadly cousin MERS. Both studies looked at large numbers of drug candidates, 3,639 approved drugs for MPRO molecular docking and 5,406 compounds in in vitro infection assays. And among the winners that may define the future is digoxin. Digoxin is an old drug, isolated in 1930. We know a lot about its benefits, its dangers, risks, and what therapeutic purpose it may serve. Today, this purpose is treatment of irregular heartbeat. But digoxin also has interesting biological activities that a priori have little to do with cardiology, in particular antiviral effects and anti-inflammatory properties. They may have been considered anecdotal, but in the urgent fight against COVID-19, they become very important. Does digoxin deserve a chance? Yes, as much as all the other drug candidates. And if one considers that digoxin is inexpensive and widely available, it may well end up becoming that third drug to help make a decisive difference for hundreds of thousands of patients. Digoxin, a drug studied in the past, may well help us define a better future. And the future is now.
I'm Vanya LaRoche, molecular biologist and science storyteller.